Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm T.Y., the person in charge of hybrid IP track. Yeah, so first of all, welcome uh, every one of you at hybrid IT track. So uh, we will soon start the session uh, presented by Kevin Lee. Uh, the topic will be securing your connection from home. So for those that are just joining in, welcome to Work From Home 2020. So I would like to share with you some biodata of uh, Mr. Kevin. So he's a veteran of Citrix application and desktop virtualization solution. He's passionate with Microsoft technologies on the area of Azure, Stack HCI, VDI, and RDS solution. Moreover, he also holds an active ISC2 CISSP certification and was a Microsoft MVP on virtual machines for three terms. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Kevin. Hi, good morning. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, let me share with you my my slides. Yeah, today my topics will be securing your connection working from home. Currently, myself mm, also working from home and we have been working from home since mm, the starting of MCO. Working from home is a, a big mm, challenge for everyone of us. And we have been uh, finding ways to adjust to the, mm, the new normal. How actually we working circulating circularly to assessing our um, company servers and also supporting our customers. So um, myself actually coming from a um, system integrator and IT companies, they will provide IT support services and implementation for our customers. So it's very crucial um, us actually look into um, how we we providing remote access um, and support services to the customer, and also providing um, application and um, desktop access to our users. So um, today's agenda, um, I will be typically covers um, on the three areas. One is actually the new normal um, for work from home, and second will be um, using something that out of box Microsoft remote access services. Then the next will be using uh, the BUE feature functionality of Microsoft RDS to do virtual apps and desktop. And last but not least, is we leveraging the the other third party add on products um, to Microsoft solution, which is using Citrix virtual apps and desktop to run high definition application and have more um, tighter security control. Uh, let's um, we move on into the topics. Yeah. So um, thanks to the MC um, that have a briefly introduced about myself. So I'm an infrastructure security consultant that um, passionate in IT that I'm doing uh, on Microsoft Azure Stack HCI, VDI and RDS. So thanks for our um, sponsors and our event organizers. Um, HP has a wide range of products. And the board of offerings of um, for Azure Stack HCI, which is can be configured with uh, Sweetless and Intel Authent. So why we um, sharing this is some of the um, application servers or VDIs require a massive um, IOPS. So um, Azure Stack HCI can provide um, out the ultimate um, IOPS that requires with the true um, greater input uh, throughputs. So it, it will enhance users experience when they run on the VDI. So um, with the um, reasons uh, sharing with the Satya Nadila, the Microsoft CEO, what we have um, uh, said that we have seen two years of world of digital transformation in two months. With this pandemic of uh, COVID-19, many of us have um, learned how to adapt the new way of working, the new normal, in a very rapid and fast um, for, forward moving manner. Everything we have to adjust and learn in a new way. 
in order for us mm, to continue mm, to grow and adapt to the new mm, working styles. So world of a remote in everything. So people are looking at productive and even when they are working remotely. So organization are tied to migrating or looking for their business application to digital trans mm, info infrastructures and mm, platform. Some they're moving into the uh, web-based application or hosted on a cloud or some of that they still mm, want to deliver their application and their servers and their data throughout their mm, on-premise servers. So these mm, will be the topics for us mm, to focus on today. So there are three areas that people want to mm, primarily look at is actually how they actually conduct a powerful meetings and collaborate with mm, and work through experience with those people working from home. So this, this is why we look at a lot of things that people using Zooms, using Microsoft Teams, actually conduct mm, meetings and collaborate with mm, colleagues. And second, and their workers mm, want to actually uh, connect into the corporates to assessing their corporate data, their application, their fast servers. Uh, and the IT actually want to make sure everything actually is mm, is being uh, providing to the users with the same experience and in a secure manner. So next, mm, they are, mm, the way people work is also changing. Based on the Gunners mm, reports, the Gunners CFO survey delivers about 74% intent to actually shift so from some employees to remote work permanently. So uh, based on my personal experience, and this is what I'm seeing, we has been working about close to three months plus mm, from home, and we, we are we are still practicing working from home, and most of our colleagues uh, are still prefer working from home. And when we go back to our office, mm, whenever there's a necessary uh, to be mm, on prem, we notice that actually the, the office buildings uh, in old days, the park, car park are so difficult to find. But now today, uh, we don't have a much difficulty to find mm, parking slots. What it means to me is it seems to be a lot of people are start adopting working in a different way, meaning working from home. And I see also main, mm, want to manage their, their families. So right now, mm, people are work from home anyway. So they are 31% of the mm, people are work outside the technician office and 76% I work in two or more locations. And work in more locations is about, mm, more than three locations is about 52%. So we are very dynamic of how the way we work now today in the new workforce. However, mm, while providing convenience to the users, but Security is a top IT priority. So they want to ensure remote access to cloud and on-premise mm, apps is secure. Second, they also want to mm, simplify discovery of apps for users. You want to ensure the user experience good. And they also want to actually mm, providing them a way to actually have a mm, carry out their productive mm, works by collaborate and with their contractors and their partners. So we, we are seeing a lot of partners and contactors now so they are accessing to our corporate mm, networks and how we actually do the governance and control. So the security control to protect those access are uh, very important. We also require to look into the mm, governance, uh, uh, audit trails and to, to meet with the compliance. So there's um, things that we um, further need to actually extend the data protection to devices because they are being your own device, meaning that we can bring our all um, type of equipment that owned by the employee or the staff or the contractor, which is the corporate have no control um, in terms of the health um, status or is there any malicious application be installed in those um, uh, devices or any key loggers that actually plug into the Windows or Mac desktops, they actually try to steal passwords. So those are a lot of things that growing concern that IT actually look in ways to protecting, yet providing a rapid access uh, to the users. So 
we are looking at the how to actually identify um, identities and the devices, what are the apps and the infrastructure and the data. So these um, these five key areas are very crucial when looking into security providing working from home solution. So to users, um, they always ask back the same question when I work from home, they will demand and request with um, the following three questions. Can I still access all of my apps and data to perform my jobs? And is everything still work the same way? Is it my end user experience good? Can I still be productive while working remotely? Is it I'm able to load my loadings or accessing my application seamlessly or I need to go through a lot of hassles or waiting uh, long hours of loading uh, apps. So those are the things that the concern of the users. Next, the IT will look into three primary key area. Can we rapidly deploy an employee access remote uh, access solution? Is our environment actually flexible enough to dynamic respond to your business need? Because this pandemic happens, there are many companies want to help with running in days. In compared to the old days, that it will take months actually to provision new IT infrastructure, then get things ready. But now today's time is um, rapid deployment uh, become very crucial. The fast response to the um, business need or the environment change is become um, uh, the top priority for the IT. So um, the last, while we do fast, we want to make sure it's the best security and performance and reliability. These three key criteria to providing to our users. Those are the crucial things that IT are looking at. So first um, is um, the there we we are typically look into a VPN solution. So Microsoft Windows 2019 and it since the old days of Windows servers already um, come with Microsoft Remote um, Access uh, services feature built in without additional cost. So you can just turn on the, your Windows servers and enable, enable with the feature functionality and you're ready to access and managing your application. Um, providing your users to access their application. So, um, and the users only um, what they need is they just have a Windows desktop, then convey a VPN connection, um, connection without any third party add on cost. And this is, will be very, uh, very um, cost effective. And in fact, actually at no additional cost, it's simple to set up for a small, um, uh, SME environment um, customer. This is to achieve cost savings with a flexible to scale and grow as you need it. So I will be sharing with you with the uh, how actually we turn on a VPN access in a, in, in in the Windows boxes. Then um, how actually we able to establish um, the connection. Give me a second. With the interest of time, uh, I have um, be captures with the screen um, so that how we actually we turn on remote access um, services. In this is easy, the roles is performed through Windows um, uh, server managers that we add um, to roles and features wizards. So first we click on the remote access. Then the next, we click next. Then he will start to perform the installation. After a while, the installation is successful. Then we can we will en enable with the um, roles is direct access and VPN um, Rust. Then um, we have uh, three options to um, deploy. Uh, with the deploy with uh, both um, direct access and VPN. This is a direct access is easy providing a seamless um, connections for Windows 10 machine, but this requires a Windows Enterprise Edition license. Uh, Compared to a um, deployed VPN, you can use a legacy Windows actually establish a VPN connection. The song recommendation is you deploy with the direct access. Direct access requires more 
additional configuration steps. But in this demo, I'm also focused on the quick deployment on using Microsoft VPN uh, configuration. So the, once you enable it, then you click configure and enable role, uh, routing and um, remote access. Then you through the wizards, you select the configuration, you move access, dial out of VPN. So this allows the VPN connection back to the corporate. The configuration is completed. Yeah, it sounds um, wonderful and it's a very simple step that actually providing a VPN access instantly uh, with a, a few mouse click. Then on the client side, actually we providing uh, uh, configure to network and sharings on the control panels. Then the next you, you choose a connection options, connect to a workspace. Then the next um, steps you do is actually use my internet connection VPN to establish the connection. So what it means is your homes, you already have existing Wi-Fi um, that connect to your broadband routers. So we can make use of this connection, the establish VPN connection directly. Second um, uh, option, the setting actually, if assuming in old days that you have a um, 4G, uh, you, you have a um, dial up um, modems that you are down directly. So that is actually. Cla uh, <coughs> Kevin? Yes. Kevin, this Noel. You are not in slideshow mode, are you? Yeah, I'm in a slideshow mode. Doesn't look like it. Can can, can see again? Let me try no, to. No, doesn't, doesn't look like you're in slideshow mode. I think maybe it's your slideshow setting. It's not coming out in slideshow mode on the projected screen to all of us. Uh, can can see you again? <clears throat> yeah, not in slideshow mode. I think it's, uh, yeah, now you are. Okay, I didn't notice that sometimes there's a uh, teams um, have this problem, uh, have to um, uh, okay. stop sharing, then um, connect back. Okay. Yeah. Th thanks, right. for, um, thanks for notifying me. So uh, let me try to um, go back to the slides, uh, you know, so we, we will run through a, a quick one. So this is um, the, the first steps when we enable the remote access to the server manager as I shared earlier. So then the installation process will um, take place. Next, uh, we will select the roles and services we do um, point to the direct access and VPN RAS access. Then the third steps we select the deploy um, uh, VPN only. So this is the quickest way and the simplest way to deploy a VPN access. But if let's say we have more, uh, uh, you require more security control and more um, silver access, you can enable with the uh, direct access and VPN um, configuration. So v uh, direct access providing the seamless connection for Windows 10 uh, enterprise computers. Then the next steps where we enable with the, the um, deploy VPN modes, which is the focus of us, how we quickly we can turn on the VPN modes to establish a VPN connection. So we select the configure and enable routing and remote access. So next, we select the configuration with the remote access using the dial out of VPN. Then with these clicks, we are done with the configuration. So on the client side, meaning a Windows 7, Windows 10, or all day legacy XP machines, which is some uh, SMB environments still have uh, old machines, which is they are in, they are in the uh, map of migrating to a new uh, OS on Windows 10. It, you can configure with the uh, VPN connections with connect to a workspace. This um, task is performed through control panel, network and sharing. So these will be have a two options when we run through the wizards when you connect to a works um, workspace. So first, actually, is to use my internet connection to um, writing on top of your existing broadband lines or existing internet um, uh, 4G lines, for example. The other way, actually, you do um, down to a modem. Next, um, we configure the IP address or the um, FQDN name of your servers. We, in this case, our VPN servers, then we, we, we establish the connection. 
So after that, we establish the connection. We are ready. So let me do a quick demo to you. From here, server manager, we can launch the remote access services, uh, remote access management, and the routing remote access, which is the console that actually will be launched. And this is remote access management console. The configuration it looks um, very interesting to us, and very it is very simple. So when we create the open um, uh, our RAS management, this is the console that we'll be seeing. And over here are the dashboard that we're seeing or what are the activities the number of users have um, for, um, established on connections. And over here also give you a dashboard about the operation status, whether the service is running properly, then the number of machines that is established connection and how long and what kind of um, bandwidth consumption be, being established. Then there's a, 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 a built-in report that are um, viewing that it can be generating through the reports. So let me show you the configuration. So the configuration is, it will be pretty much very simple for most of people to actually quickly deploy and rolling out. So here are the more um, feature functionality that can be um, setting up. I just do a quick run through as um, with the interest of the time. Then the next I will um, will be established and connecting as through uh, as a users. Give me a second. Kevin, yeah, I think your <coughs> your virtual machines have stage fright. Maybe yeah. you just want to move on. Sure, we will do. Yeah, they just yeah. go. Yeah, just keep moving. Otherwise, you run out of time. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, uh, just a quick um, so so the end 
will be established a VPN connection and the users will be able to um, start to actually access as a, um, as a normal as um, they connecting to the um, corporate network, even they're working from home. That is user's experience will be seamless. OK, let me move on to the next section. OK, so the next um, is we look into uh, different ways achieve um, providing a better connect, um, uh, different mode of users accessing to their corporate networks. So Microsoft Windows um, Server 2019 uh, have a feature functionality that is enabled with the RDS um, connection. So um, perhaps some of you may ask, uh, can I just probably enable my remote desktop, the RTP on my servers, then start to providing people to accessing to my servers? Uh, if let's say you just enable the RTP to your firewalls, the connections if not protected to uh, SSL or HTTPS, the connections actually can be easily break in by uh, by the by the attackers will exploit the vulnerability. So with Microsoft Remote Desktop Services, um, we can deliver with um, the section based um, computing, or it can be delivered as a virtual desktop infrastructure, meaning that we section based computing, we can deliver just, just like apps models, or you can be delivered as a desktop. So what you need to achieve with the Microsoft um, Remote Desktop Services licenses, um, they added in. Then this is providing the benefit that um, it's easy to access the application and data and still maintain data and security in their um, servers. What it means is the all the processing powers when they are running application or desktops, all the processing powers actually is running on the backend servers. OK, and this is why we are looking into the um, uh, uh, cutting edge uh, Azure Stacks HCI to provide a, a massive throughput of IOPS. So, um, the second benefit actually is provide the flexibility and reliability for um, the most demanding needs of the users. The third, it will providing a central management and deployment of the business data and application. So, how we, um, why is it very important that um, we, we look into the RDS um, with the application and the, um, virtual desktops? Because the virtual desktop, sometimes we may require to actually to to providing a dedicated desktop to the users, meaning a Windows 10 machines with a 4 gig memories with two vCPU, and you want to cater about 50 users. So the kind of IOPS and the memory consumptions, uh, we can leverage on the um, out of the box features um, that built on the Windows Server 2019 that enable with uh, Azure Stack HCI to provide um, a, a robust um, uh, connections um, with the um, with the pool put with the solution. So the solutions also providing high availability and also DR with the live migration, um, the load balancing and Hyper-V replica for um, and storage replica to the remote location. And why is, um, people are looking into to the application and desktop virtualization, the key index of the people adopting to um, application and virtual um, application and desktop virtualization because of one of the primary reason is because of security. Because typically a VPN connections, uh, regardless of you using Microsoft Rock, um, remote access services or you using your firewall um, VPN feature functionality that enable, you have a problem actually is um, providing a split tunneling. Split tunneling means that in, once the user establishes a VPN connection, uh, when they access corporate data or corporate servers, they will go to the VPN tunnels. But when the users are browsing the, um, a website, let's say go to YouTube or go to third party websites, then the traffic will not go to the VPN. But this um, providing a, a greater performance when the user establishes a VPN connection. But this um, introduce a problem is the attackers uh, can possible that um, hiding by um, or hijacking the sections and take control of the um, the staff or the contactor computers. Then they hiding through the VPN connection, gain access to the corporate networks. 
and the the and the, the make things worse is mm, the contractor machines sometimes their machines is un we, it, there's an unknown mm, health status and the machines is unmanaged so you could be infected with the ransom waste and that will be once they but mm, once they establish connection into corporate networks the virus or the ransomware will start propagate to entire networks we have been i personally have seen a few customers then they have mm, they, they was infected in this way to the entire network with the mm, one kind virus to the vpn connection and the users once they establish a vpn connection because a vpn typically will be able will be forwarding all the broadcast or noise traffic and this actually require a high bandwidth consumption in results actually the user experience it become very poor because then sometimes they want to run a uh, microsoft dynamics or sap or their any business application which is very resource hungry in terms of bandwidth it will start to feel the slowness then once the um, users actually um, gaining access to their corporate networks they start to have an unrestricted access they can do anything they want and they can launch and they can copy out in far so that is important in post of the inside the threats uh, you don't know what are the things that are happening and that will be a, a data thief that is stolen the co corporate data the vta use case that people mm, the vda and application use case is people are looking at the primary four areas one actually is, is in terms of security and liberations for financial healthcare or government even uh, the the some mm, uh, companies are, are also really follow with the uh, ITSM or ISO standards actually want to make sure their security and I, we also seeing there are more and more SMB customer also want to make sure their security is in control because digital and asset data is so crucial to the to the company it's a lifeblood then second things are people are looking at the elastic workforce the mergers and acquisition of the company and the short terms um, employee access contractor and partner access uh, compared to the old days that people need to be physically present in you know, um, corporate uh, in, in, in when they're accessing to the system but now so a lot of people uh, want to accessing to a remote um, location then the third actually the employees want to have a different form of accessing bring your own device or using their mobile devices with those devices belonging to the individuals the environment like call center and branch workers then the the last but not least there are some special works in workloads environment let's say some uh, engineering or exploration requires specific um, application which is cannot run on a regular desktop they will really leverage running on the corporate uh, servers uh, like autocad um, that kind of application and which require high um, uh, high specs of um, hardware. So those are the use cases that when people come into using the VDS solution. So in Microsoft RDS um, Windows Server 2019, uh, there are components of the RDS um, have divided in uh, three key areas. One on the left hand side, which is you can see, is the RD clients. The RD client actually support multiple type of um, client across platform. It also support HTML5, meaning you can use a browser-based uh, clientless um, access to launch and run any Windows application that deliver to the RDS um, section. So it also available in the mobile devices like Android, uh, mobile um, or iOS device or any Windows um, across platform. So once they establish the connection, they will be accessing to an uh, Audi infrastructure. So Audi infrastructure, there will be a component called Audi Web. So Audi Web is actually providing a web front end for people to log in. To log in. Then the uh, Audi um, virtualization host actually providing the uh, the hosting of the virtual desktop. The Audi gateway and um, providing the connections back to the back end to the block, um, Audi broker. The Audi broker actually providing the connections which desktop or application to be providing access to the users for in the high availability environment we can deploy um, together with the microsoft sql server um, database to providing loop balance and high availability 
all the connections when the users connecting to will be authenticated to Microsoft Active Directory. Then the last but not least is the Audi section host and Win 10 so that application or desktop Windows 10 or desktop will be able to deliver to the users. So the users will once they accessing to the apps and the desktop, they can accessing to their fast servers or their application. And this is what you requires actually is a additional license of audience um, license when you enable um, with the feature functionality to perfecting your user access. So, um, and often there's a question they ask, um, so I, what type of solution should I run? Um, it seems there are two modes that you can run a window desktop, uh, VDI or remote apps. So we put it the, in the simple thing, way of mm, comparing look at the properties types of landed and high rise building as we know that landed properties mm, the mm, their cost of maintenance and the cost of purchase or acquisition of the, mm, the landed property is very high is same thing for a windows desktop vdi so in windows desktop vdi says is providing a desktop virtualization it provides the entire desktop to the users it, it means that a uh, desktops require a uh, mm, high capacity of memory, let's say 4 gig memory and 2 um, vCPU and one unit of server with 256 gig memory, you only can cater about 50 to 60 um, uh, virtual machine. And the cost um, also will be high and in terms of maintenance is high as well. So um, compared to the remote apps, which is an application virtualization, it's similar like high rise building, staying in the condominium. That actually you have a low cost maintenance because it's, it's being shared by multiple tenants. And so the in results, we, we require um, very um, low hardware specs of the servers. Perhaps a 32 gig memory of VMs to um, cater for 30, 50 users, depending on the application loads that you're putting into the server. And the licenses that require is Microsoft Redo, uh, all these um, uh, license. So the ratios between the lender and high-rise buildings is one uh, to one, which is mm, the, the density of the lender, one household for one lender property. But for high-rise buildings, the, the densities will be high, its users is one to many, meaning one uh, buildings, it can be have multiple tenants, the edges staying in there. And often we see hundreds of thousands in, in, in a condominiums environment. So um, let me do a, a, a quick demo session on showing you about the remote desktops uh, solution. These are uh, to simulate uh, a computers. Can be coming from any um, type of browsers. They are accessing to the to the farm. So first, I, I putting in the passwords. On the browser, once we enter the passwords, we able to launch the application so it can be appear as an application mode or you can be a desktop. First, we'll open our PowerPoint. So you can see the sections. Are securing to a HTTPS connect, um, connection, meaning this entire section, the, uh, when the user entire um, connecting through the user credential and passwords and all the application being tied in between are all fully encrypted. 
So we open a desktop, then we launch a, um, a PowerPoint. And we can start to um, do anything. As usual, we can um, do our normal um, uh, functionalities. Like examples, we try to save the documents. So if we have an option to so store locally or we can be mm, transfer the data to a redirect drive and folders, meaning the redirected uh, drive and folders is the mm, my endpoint computer set that I'm using, you are able to mm, transfer out the data. So I can transfer in the data or I can save as a user, save it on desktop. This is how seamlessly actually we we we, we are creating and using the application modes to deliver. Okay, the next we look at the desktop. So this because just now I'm logging as an application mode, and this section I see follow to me. Okay, we. Um, and we, we can perform all the tasks. So this is actually the users will be on entire desktop so I can save all the file that in, in the different way. So just on the application mm, virtualization that the first demo that I show it to you it is will be in, in the in the shape and all the data are stored on the server. But for this ones when they mm, when save all the data will be saved in the local desktop. And you can see this one is it's running a Windows uh, 10 machines and the full, full desktop modes have been delivered. OK, so this is on, on the desktop virtualization on the on the client sites. Next, we look at the, on the server sites. So managing the audience, mm, uh, the audience sections, we are using the company, the server managers, and over here there are tools and functionalities as we are using to managing the section. And we are we are over here. Let me zoom it. There will be a um, number of roles and infrastructures, the deployment overview that we have our the web, they providing the connections and the gateways. Then we will be controlled with the um, RDS licensing. Once the the user establish connection, will the the connection brokers will point to which are the servers or the desktops um, to to launch.
from here, here are the steps actually we publishing uh, an application. So the remove apps, mm, what how he does is actually we install an application, let's say Microsoft Office, mm, our favorite application or business application, the line of mm, business application into the into the servers. Then we we selecting to the wizards what type of the application we want to publish. For examples, over here we have multiple. We can select, or we can mm, click to the the. The folders to allocate the the far or the executive involves mm, to present to the users to deliver to the users. So this is how simplestly the simplest least mm, way of publishing an application. So after a while, mm, the application being published. So he has showing that the uh, SS mm, 2016 and Firefox, the Fox mm, it readers are published. And we can see the application has been published over here. So these are the, mm, the steps actually rapidly deploys mm, application roll out to the users. So in old days, we probably leverage a lot of mm, tools, mm, uh, uh, software description tools like mm, SCCMs or to, to deliver apps, but mm, with this dynamics, mm, people are looking at the rapid way of mm, deploying new apps. We can instantly deploy a new application to the users and with the users can access the application within a minute. It's, it's similar like today's we probably we, we subscribe to some broadcast system. Uh, let's say in Malaysia we're using subscribe to um, the Astro. So we want to watch a sport channels. We just call to the customer service or we enable it to the subscribe um, on our, our remote control. So the news um, TV channels or sport channels will automate deliver to us without the the mm, the technicians being come over here to implement. So the same things in today's IT doesn't require to deploy mm, application individually on all desktop and support individually. What they do is easy do in the central location, updates and patchings, or pu mm, publishing a new apps or old apps. This how rapidly deploy application in the quickest and faster manner. Besides apps, we also can de deploy in a desktop. We can deploy a 10,000 desktop or 10,000 application within a minute uh, to make accessible to the users. OK, this is on the, the VDIs on, and the uh, remote apps on Microsoft RDS. Next. I will share reviews. There's a um, advanced feature functionality that coming from Citrix, uh, which is um, with the years of um, working relationship with Microsoft that actually developing, uh, extending the advanced um, feature functionality of Microsoft RDS feature. So this um, will be providing more um, enhancement with the user's experience, to allow them to access anytime, anywhere, and with any type of devices. And Second thing, they actually provide more security control and superior mm, user performance and greater with the 3D and high definition application use. So again, uh, the RDS and mm, VDI solutions will run perfectly and ideally workloads on the Azure Stack HCI because of mm, providing a massive mm, throughput into our IOPS, into our, mm, uh, managing and important is achieving cost saving. So with the Citrix in virtual apps and desktop solution, it providing things more comprehensive end to end that allows in the mobile optimization single sign on two factor authentication with loop balancers, reverse proxy, 
and many, many advanced features that integrating multiple web-based application, enterprise application, and cloud-based application or mobile apps. So that is a uh, things that uh, Citrix have enhanced or added into the into the Microsoft RDS and uh, Windows and virtual desktop solution. So in the um, typically there are here are the three key areas that um, people are looking at is actually on the security, users experience and management when they are adopting to the Citrix solution. So I will do a quick demo to demonstrate to you how um, people are using the Citrix and what are the user experience. I will be um, similarly, I will be accessing to a browser. And you may notice that there's a um, uh, option over there called password. This password actually is enabled, allows us to enable two factor authentication. So the two factor authentication can be using uh, Microsoft Azure Authenticator or Google Authenticator or any third party proprietary um, or open source. Um, uh, authentication tools. So over here you can see my mobile phone and this is my one-time password. So the one-time password is similar to our bank's account surface in our bank's uh, application when we want to uh, transfer some money. I may have facing some problem. Let me show you the um, things I have pre-recorded, the videos. Yeah, first um, I will be logging in, then register my device with a two-factor authentication. So I will be um, enabled with a two-factor authentication um, authenticator on the, my Google. Kevin? Yeah. You have three minutes. Two yes. minutes actually, and after that uh, we need to switch over. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this is a screen that's just now that we have seen, and now I'm looking with the two factor applications, and I was able to see my screens which is similar to the RDS that we allow us to actually launch in the business application and that's the desktop. This is how the business application being launched. And let me share with you another. It's, this is how we actually run a high definition application.
Okay, I think we're out of time. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, back to uh, MC. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much, Kevin, for the sharing. Uh, I hope everyone attendees here uh, do uh, gain some insights from it. There are many demos uh, shown. And if you like the session, you can give a thumbs up. You can share your